On behalf of the <coughs> Dominican Olympic Committee, I'm just saying how pleased I am to be here today to put forward a sporting voice. Because many times we, like the disabled persons, we are left behind. Resilience, as far as I, as I understand, is having the ability to recover from a negative event. Good health is the foundation of our way of life and ultimately the state of our wider society and economy. Sports has the ability to have a positive impact on both of these areas. Many of us still consider sports as a game, as a recreation when we have nothing else to do. This concept, I fear, is shared by many persons in authority, and that is the reason why sports is always placed on the back burner when issues of national interest are being discussed and implemented. I say without fear of contradiction that there is no other activity that can bring a country that level of exposure, international rec recognition, and pride as when a son of the soil has attained the pinnacle of his or her chosen sport and excels on the international stage. To most of the rest of the world, sports is now considered and accepted as a multi-billion dollar industry. And until we in Dominica can develop a change of attitude to sports, then we are missing out on an ideal opportunity to promote and market our country internationally and in many instances to earn much needed foreign exchange. We are all aware of the enormous impact that Usain Bolt had in making Jamaica a household name globally. And being careful not to be accused of being swell-headed, as there is no reason for me to be, and I've never been, Dominica was widely publicized and became known throughout the cricketing, cricketing world and beyond during my career as an international cricket umpire. These are facts which cannot be disputed. So sports has to be given its rightful place on the front burner when the planning and rebuilding process and the rebuilding process of Dominica. We must spare no effort and resources in providing our young persons with greater opportunity to fulfill their known potential. Our grounds, which have now become very vulnerable to the effects of climate change and global warming, have to be given special attention. Dominica, as we are all aware, is not blessed with an abundance of flat land to be utilized as plain fields. And so the few that we have in existence must be cherished and protected at all times, and I dare say, at all costs. Many of our plain fields were negatively affected by the winds and river floods associated with Hurricane Maria, and these grounds and facilities need to be given urgent attention to minimize further damage. To name a few of those grounds, the Windsor Park Sports Stadium, where we had damage to the lights, roofs of the stands, the, electron the electronic scoreboard, and very unfortunately, the roof of the Bill Doctoral Sports Pavilion. I have had preliminary discussions with the manager of the Windsor Park Sports Stadium as to how best I can assist with the rehabilitation of this facility. And when I say this facility, I'm not talking about the Windsor Park Sports Stadium, I'm talking about the Billy Doctor Pavilion. Dubla <laughs> Plain Field suffered damage from the winds, river and sea. Grand Bay Plain Field by the winds and river. And the Bathurst Plain Field is now under severe threat by the path of the Rosa River. This area is of paramount importance because if a retaining wall is not built and built speedily, not only will we lose a plain field, but eventually also an entire community. And with such a beautiful and attractive name as Paradise Valley, the least we can do is to ensure that this area is given the protection it deserves. The Patrick John Football House, the headquarters of football in Dominica, is also perilously at risk. This project needs to be given urgent attention. Then we come to the interesting issue of the Portersville Savannah which has now become world famous for its numerous skyscrapers of containers. Obviously, all right-thinking persons, myself included, would have understood the circumstances surrounding the use of that park for the temporary use, and I repeat the word temporary, for the storage of containers. But we must be vigilant that this does not become the new permanent home of empty containers. 
or young persons must not be indefinitely denied of opportunities and facilities to develop and display their sporting talents. And I call on the management of DASPA and other relevant authorities to attempt to bring this situation back to normalcy at the very earliest without compromising the safety and efficiency of port operations. The multi-sports complex targeted for stock farm needs to be brought back, according to the West Indies cricket captains over the past few years, needs to be brought back onto the drawing board as it's important that they can be able to withstand severe and adverse weather conditions. The much needed and much anticipated all weather athletic track has to be treated as priority if our young athletes are to be given the slightest chance to compete on a level playing field with their counterparts. I'm hopeful I can meet with the Prime Minister and his cabinet at the earliest, at their convenience, to get the ball rolling on this, the single most important project as far as sports in Dominica is concerned. We want it badly. We need it badly, but we want it to be done properly. We will not accept mediocrity just for the sake of having a track. And let me say that after numerous negotiating sessions since we took up office in May of 2017 with the funding agencies of the Dominica Olympic Committee, we are pleased to announce that the funds and expertise are now available to bring this much needed project to fruition. Mr. Prime Minister, we must not let this opportunity pass us by. Dominican athletes have suffered badly in the past through poor governance, maladministration, blinkered vision, and questionable accounting practices of previous administrations of the Dominica Olympic Committee. This present administration, under my stewardship, is determined and committed to eliminate those practices. I want to congratulate the Prime Minister and his cabinet for the vision, guidance, and courage displayed during those dark days, and there were literally dark days following Maria. Your task was a difficult one, but in my mind, you handled it efficiently, professionally, and humanely. In conclusion, let me say that the Dominica Olympic Committee stands ready and prepared to play its part in this process of ensuring that Dominica becomes the, first, the world's first climate resilient country. I ask for God's wisdom and blessings on all our decision and policy makers, and I pray for God's continued protection on our beautiful and beloved nature island. I thank you.